Tesla has released full self-driving version 14, the first major full self-driving update in one year. This is the biggest change to Tesla's full self-driving. Here's what has been changed. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Tesla has started to release full self-driving version 14. Musk has hyped it up a lot, of course, as he always does, but here's what it actually does. Tesla began rolling out full self-driving V13 uh, to owners with the latest hardware for computers installed in their vehicles, but it's taken them about a year to roll out version 14. So it's taken quite a long time. If you don't have version 14 yet, don't freak out. It's coming over the next couple of weeks to different countries, different locations, different states, etc. But some Tesla hardware for owners are starting to download this update. Here are the release notes. Added arrival options for you to select where full self-driving should park in a parking lot, on the street, in a driveway, in a parking garage, or at the curbside. So basically, more options to drive to select where full self-driving should actually park the car. Added handling to pull over or yield for emergency vehicles, police cars, fire trucks, ambulances. So that means you don't have to take over if there is a police car, fire truck, or an ambulance or some kind of emergency vehicle, the car should be able to yield for an emergency vehicle itself. That's pretty advanced stuff right there. Added navigation and routing into the vision-based neural network for real-time handling of blocked roads and detours. Added additional speed profile to further customize driving style preference. So I believe that means that you can adjust speeds, like set cap speeds for different profiles. So if your son or your daughter is driving the car or your friend or even your wife or even your husband, I don't know, you can set a speed cap so that people won't kill themselves. Improved handling for static and dynamic gates. Improved offsetting for road debris, e.g. tires, tree branches and boxes. Now I should get back to what I was saying before about the killing yourself. I'm not trying to say Tesla full self-driving is going to kill your son or your daughter, but I'm just saying, you know, you might want to potentially cap the speed when they're in the car by themselves, for example. Improved handling of several scenarios, including unprotected turns, lane changes, vehicle cut-ins, and school buses. Improved full self-driving's ability to manage system faults and recover smoothly from degraded operation for enhanced reliability. Added automatic narrow field washing to provide rapid and efficient front camera self-cleaning and optimize aerodynamic wash at higher vehicle speeds. Having the cameras cleaned is incredibly essential. Today, driving my Xpeng G6 in the evening, it had four phantom braking instances because the cameras were dirty. So cameras being dirty can cause all kinds of issues. Added alerting for residue buildup on the interior windshield that may impact front camera visibility. If affected, visit service for cleaning. So I think you can't actually clean that yourself. Overall smoothness and sentience apparently has been improved. Full self-driving is now smoother and smarter. Sentience is obviously a reference to its intelligence. Parking spot selection and parking quality. So apparently Tesla are saying it can park better and you've got many, many more options for parking spots. So a lot of changes. How is it going to work in the real world? How good is it going to be? No one really knows yet. It's only just being launched right now. Full self-driving supervised has some changes. This is what Tesla said. Under your supervision, full self-driving can drive your Tesla almost anywhere. It will start from a park position, make lane changes, select forks to follow your navigation route, navigate around other vehicles and objects, make left and right turns and park at your destination. You and anyone you authorize must use additional caution and remain attentive. It does not make your vehicle autonomous. Do not become complacent. So that's what Tesla was saying. It's not autonomous yet. Full self-driving 
supervised is enabled on your vehicle. To use the feature, press the start self driving button on the UI or press the right scroll wheel button once. You can disable full self driving supervised in autopilot settings. It's quite easy to turn on. I've had a go of it myself in the US and now in Australia as well. UI improvements. So there's some changes to the way full self driving looks on your screen, what you're going to see on your screen. There's a start self driving with a tap on the touch screen from park or anytime during your drive. So you can just tap the touch screen and it'll start driving for you. Adjust settings like the speed profile and arrival options directly from the autopilot visualization, visualization on the center display. Another change, speed profiles. Full side driving supervised will now determine the appropriate speed based on a mix of driver profile, speed limit, and surrounding traffic. So I'm not sure what it means by driver profile, but I think it might come down to, like I said, those settings you can make for different drivers of the car. Introduced new speed profile sloth, S-L-O-T-H, which comes with lower speeds and more conservative lane selection than chill. So Tesla have introduced an even slower version of all self-driving for old people maybe, or people who are scared to use it the first time potentially. So it's called sloth. I think if you put sloth on and there's people around, they might not like it very much. But anyway, it's a feature now. Driver profile now has a stronger impact on behavior. The more assertive the profile, the higher the max speed. So that's interesting. The more assertive your personal profile on uh, Tesla's system, the higher the max speed. Right scroll wheel up, down, now adjust speed profile setting rather than your precise max speed offset selection in miles per hour and kilometers per hour. So a lot of changes here to take in. Changes to arrival options. You can now select an arrival option such as parking lot, street, driveway, parking garage, and curbside for robo-taxi style drop-offs. The Tesla are trying to get close to it being able to be a robo-taxi. They're not yet, they're, they're not there yet, obviously, for owner cars. Your preferences for arrival options and preferred parking positions are persisted for each destination. I'm guessing that's a typo. Basically, they're saved into the system for each destination. Our reasoning model will assess the suitable options for your destination and pick an intuitive default for the best place to park. So Tesla's reasoning model will tell you, is it better to park on the street? Is it better to park in a lot? Or is it better to park in the driveway? Or you can decide yourself. That's kind of interesting to see it able to make that decision itself. I don't know how good it's going to be, but that'll be interesting. Brake confirm. Brake confirm at the start self-driving button is now defaulted off. When disabled, start self-driving will not require you to press and release the brake to confirm engagement. You can enable brake confirm in autopilot brake confirm. So Tesla is adding some of the features from the Tesla RoboTaxi, like improved parking capabilities at your destination, performance upgrades, and apparently um, Tesla of taken a year of data from Teslas, particularly those being driven in the United States, and use that data to improve the system. That's the biggest thing that's happened here. So will there be an improvement in miles between critical disengagement? Well, it looks like there's going to be about a 3x or three times improvement in miles between disengagements where the driver has to take over themselves. And if there is, Tesla would go from about 400 miles per disengagement to 1,200 miles. Tesla probably needs to get to approximately 8,000 to, 8, to 10,000 miles per disengagement for unsupervised ride hailing, as in for your vehicle to be a robo taxi and you to make money out of it. Yeah. You need to get to that point where, you know, you really get only one intervention from the driver approximately every 15,000 kilometers. So it's at about 9,000 miles. That's quite a lot, yeah? But, I mean, it's possible. I think Tesla could could hit that in potentially maybe maybe a year, potentially. Now, of course, the whole deal here is Tesla has to prove to authorities that these cars are safer than humans in order to get this approved. But I don't think they need to be a little bit safe. They've got to be quite a bit safer for it to be approved. And... I'm not sure how long that's going to take. I'm curious to know what you guys think. 
it's going to be interesting to see how good this is. Obviously, I'm just sharing with you this information based on what Tesla has said. We don't actually know how good it is. It could be amazing. could just be a small change. Hopefully, it's a big change. But um, I know a lot of people are really excited about this. So please let me know your experience once you start using this new update and send us an email, guys. Let us know in the comments if you've actually just downloaded it and tested it out. Really exciting times. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.